In this video I'm going to show you how you can use scriptable objects to store any kind of information in a tile. You don't have to install any extras or make special tiles, you can use these standard tiles straight out of the box with Unity's built-in tilemap system. As an example I will show you how to make those little bugs that check how fast they can crawl based on the type of tile they are crawling over. The main idea is that we use scriptable objects as a wrapper or box. In that box we place the standard tile along with additional data. This data is global, meaning it will be the same for every type of tile. This is useful for information such as how sticky this type of tile is when your character is walking on it, or if it is poisonous and so on. The method I am showing you is not useful for when every single tile is supposed to have its own data that changes at one time. Like you might want to have that sticky tile lose its stickiness the more characters have just walked over it. For that it is much better to use structs, which I will do in a future video. So maybe you should subscribe? Ok, back to our global data and scriptable objects. I am starting with a brand new project using Unity 2019.4.2, but this will work for any Unity version back to 2018 and since this is a long term supported version, it will work even if you stumble upon this in the distant future. Let's start by creating a 2D tilemap simply by right clicking in the scene hierarchy and choose tilemap. Next we need a palette, so click window, 2D, tile palette and dock it anywhere you want. To create tiles, just drag in some sprites from your assets folder. If you don't have any, feel free to download mine from the link in the description. Those are two variations of grass and stone tiles that fit seamlessly together. Now that we have a few tiles, let's create these scriptable objects. Make a new script, call it tile data and open it up. To turn it into a scriptable object, we place the mono behavior with scriptable object and add the create asset menu attribute so we can create instances of the script in the editor. Every kind of tile is going to have its own instance of the scriptable object wrapped around it. So the first thing we need is a reference to that tile. Make sure to use the Unity tile map namespace to have access to that class. Instead of using tile, we will use tile base, which is the base class for all tiles. That way it will work with custom scriptable tiles and we don't have to do any casting when using Unity's tile functions later on. Some tiles might want to share the same data, so we can turn this into a list. For example, I have two grass tiles and two stone tiles and the only difference is a bit of variation in the sprite, so the data should be the same. Now in the scriptable object you can put anything you want. I'm using just two floats, walking speed and poison. This is it for this script, so save it and back in the assets folder it's time to create some instances of it by right clicking and then assign the tile references and set some values. Let's create the actual tile map next. As you can see, my tiles are twice as big as the cells in the grid. If that happens to you, you can either change the grid size or double the pixels per unit in the sprite import settings. I'm going with the first solution as I prefer bigger tiles for this tutorial. You can of course always use the transform of the tile map and change the scale to resize the entire grid once your tiles fit in perfectly. Next we want to be able to take a tile, for example by clicking on the map, and get the information we just created. For that we need a class that connects the two. So create a new script, call it map manager and open it up. Let's do the clicking first since it makes testing the other functions easier. First of all we need a reference to the tile map, so once again use the Unity Engine tile map namespace. In update we check for mouse click and convert the mouse position to a vector 3 integer, because that is what the tile map uses. With that vector we can use get tile on our tile map and that returns the tile base. Let's try that out by simply printing the name and position in the console. Back in the editor, create a new game object, call it map manager, add the script and enter play mode. 
Okay, that works, only that it prints way too often because I used get mouse button instead of get mouse button down, but that was just for testing anyway. Let's move on to get the connected tile data. Now create a list with all the scriptal objects we created before. We are going to fill that up later in the editor. The connection between each tile base and its tile data can be stored in a dictionary. And we can automate it to reduce the chance of accidental mix-ups. In Awake, we go through the tile datas and for each of the data we go through the tiles list, for which we create an entry in the dictionary. The tile will be the key and the tile data the value. Now when we click the tile, we can use the tile base to look up its data with the help of the dictionary. Let's try that out by assigning the tile datas in our map manager. And as you can see, we are getting the data connected to the tiles. Let's make use of this by creating a bug that will move based on the walking speed of the tiles. The walking speed will be used to multiply the base speed. So the grass tiles will have a speed of 1, meaning no change, but the stone tiles will use 2 to double the speed. Make a new method in the map manager called getTileWalkingSpeed and use a vector2 as a parameter. This will be a world position that objects in the game will provide. So we can directly convert to a cell position, get the tile, get the info and get the walking speed, which will be returned by the method. Right now the bugs can just move endlessly and there might not be a tile, so let's account for that and simply return 1 if the tile they are on is null. Then make a new script called bug and get a reference to the map manager simply by finding it. And yes, it might not be the worst to make the map manager a singleton, so you can easily access it from various scripts in the game. Personally, I try to avoid singletons, though I don't passionately hate them like some developers. Anyhow, right now there are just a few bugs and they get referenced simply by looking for it. Let's make the bugs move around randomly by constantly moving them forward and rotate them every few seconds. The speed is determined by base speed multiplied with the walking speed of the tile. I'm making a mistake here and not assigning the random rotation. I fix that in the end when all the bugs just walk in a straight line like an army. The nice thing is that the script doesn't even need to know what tile it is on or that there even is a tile map. It just passes in its position and the map manager returns the walking speed. Let's create the bug by adding a bug sprite and dragging it into the scene. Add the bug sprite, maybe adjust the scale and drag it into a newly made prefabs folder to turn it into a prefab. And because I hate redundant clicking, I just make a quick function to spawn the bug prefabs randomly on the map. For good practice, let's even put that in a new script called bug spawner. This one is super simple, it just has reference to the bug prefab and for every frame the space key is pressed down, a bug will be spawned at a random location. Let's put it all together, create a new game object, add the bug spawner and assign the prefab. In case you copied my mistake, actually assign the random rotation in the bug script. I also removed the line in awake that sets the counter to the move time, because this way they will choose the random rotation the moment they are spawned. Ok, it looks like everything is working quite nicely, and even on a crappy laptop like I'm using here, the game runs smoothly despite every bug requesting the data every single frame. Ok, that's pretty much it, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any kind of question, feedback or suggestion. In the next video I will show you how to set the time up on fire because destroying is even more fun than creating. Goodbye.